What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE online mining video. We're going to be talking about solo mining, offering some tips and tricks if you're wanting to get into it and just talk about the important aspects of solo mining in EVE online. The first uh, kind of tip or the first kind of thing we will talk about is choosing the right location. Depending on what your goals are, then that will probably spread you across the universe quite a bit. Whether it be like high sec, low sec, wormhole space, poshman, or null sec. If you're wanting to sell or just for profit, you can pretty much mine anywhere um, with relative ease. If you're wanting to mine resources and minerals for manufacturing, you might have to spread yourself across different areas of space like high sec for like belts bar and things like that and then low sec for like kernite maybe to get your isogen and oxium and then uh null sec where you primarily uh get things like your uh your cydrine and your mexalite and you know high volumes of uh of pyrite and things like that personally for me i um would recommend if you're a solo miner having um some sort of presence in high sec because you're going to need a vast amount of belt bar for trit going into a lot of manufacturing but also i think that as an additional uh additional supporting location would be like poshman mining things like rackavine mining things like uh spud main to help fill in the other mineral gaps for there so each whatever location you choose has its own kind of um security and its own kind of uh strategic uh application high sec you really need to worry about you know watching local looking for local spikes making sure you get off grid if you see stuff on d scan in null sec you you know need to look for anything that's a neutral to you and things like that you'll probably have a little bit more trouble with the rats and stuff out there and then in poshman you won't have really any access to local or anything like that so you essentially need to be on high alert um, same goes for uh, for low sec. Low sec, you will have um, local to monitor and things like that, but also in you'll just be kind of like on high alert in those cases. And just to kind of more broadly go over just uh, sp uh, looking for locations. Um, normally in high sec and low sec, you'd look at like asteroid belts and stuff like that. But in terms of low like low sec. Um, Poshman and uh, Nullsag you're primarily going to be looking for are or anomalies. You can use the agency for this to be able to find exactly what's available in certain areas and this is kind of based on proximity to the system as well so you do kind of need to get kind of close to get good intel about what is in those locations so depending on what your needs are it's going to change where you need to mine um, a lot of the a lot of what I do is just kind of mining for profit so I'm perfectly fine with doing like rare ores in high sec and just doing high sec mining because um, it's just a lot more chill you don't have to worry about too much about politics and things like that next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, ship selection so mining ship selection and what is appropriate for solo mining and this is kind of this is gonna be very um, very much down to preference because you can essentially use pretty much anything for solo um, with great success but if you're first starting off you're probably going to be an adventure which is fine you can run a venture in high sec or you can run a venture in wormhole space to do gas mining or whatever out there it can take you a long way um, until you're ready to upgrade usually for prospects and endurances those are kind of more um, situational based um, whether you're doing ice or you know, or that's in uh, low sec and things like that. You're gonna, you know, kind of use those uh, for very specific um, kind of task. But overall, um, I use a Mackinac for the vast majority of my mining in high sec. I like the the high or hold on that thing, and even I can pair that with an alt on uh, a porpoise for mining boost, which is very very effective. If you do plan on using a command alt like an orca or a porpoise having a hulk is not a bad idea they get a lot of benefit from the mining boost and they have just a, a lower cycle time and they're just able to mine a lot quicker but they also have a little bit less tank than say a mackinaw or a retriever so i would say just generally speaking if you don't plan on using a boosting alt you're probably either looking at a procure because it has high tank and it's a pretty decent mining barge if you want more mining uh, hold space you can upgrade to a retriever less tank but you know you get that you get less tank basically by you know opting for the bigger mining hold 
and then um, finally Mackinac. Um, Skiff is okay, but Skiff is uh, pretty uh, pretty slow to warp out nowadays. Um, if it was between Skiff and Mackinac, I would pretty much take a Mackinac um, any day of the week. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about uh, mining modules. Um, what is appropriate? What is kind of like the goal of of what you want to be looking at and like really it comes down to how much you want to spend how much you know you want your fit on your mining ship to uh cost and i normally suggest for people who want like low maintenance and not have to really worry about like keeping uh mining crystals on hand strip miner ones will you know do you very well and then uh but if you go into doing anything like uh uh, faction or modules or something then that's going to run into a kind of a cost um, issue so we're going to go in here we're going to look at uh, just these harvesters and depending on if you're doing ice or if you're doing uh, gas or whatever um, as far as ore goes strip miner ones are great they are cheap and they're not necessarily um, something that you know gankers will scan you and be like oh hey cool but if you have like ore strip miners on you, then if you get scanned, you're probably going to be a gang target because you're just adding to your kill mill value on that. If you don't mind actually bringing, bringing uh, mining crystals or training for mining crystals, then you can definitely just do modulated strip miner twos, which are going to be better yield. But you also have additional training on those and you will have to facilitate your own uh, crystals going into that and I usually recommend the uh at least the tech two crystals on these um and depending on what type or type c you're pretty much never going to use type b will have lower um will be faster cycles type a will have um a better uh yield in most cases you also want to have appropriate shield modules for tank just in case you know you do run into any problems and then also mining laser upgrades and lows depending if you want to Increase your yield, or if you want to have a little bit more tanky survivability. So all that kind of comes into play based on where you're mining. Even for high sec, I would still take a um, a ship with this kind of a tank. Pretty much anywhere I go, you know, it's like damage control two and uh, some power diagnostic systems and some uh, shield hardeners and things like that. Because you know the tank could be the difference between like barely getting away or not getting away from potential ganks at all, right? The next tip we're going to talk about is just staying informed, just, you know, knowing the environment and knowing like situ situational awareness for kind of where you're mining at. And a lot of that comes down to just like watching local. If you see local spikes, it's probably a good idea to, you know, kind of take a break. If you see a lot of things like catalyst or tornadoes or any sort of like popular gang ship on D scan, it's probably good to like get off grid and, you know, see where all that until it all kind of um, you know stabilizes or whatever and then um, just you know picking the right location like if, if you're even if you're in high seg you know trying to stay off major uh, trade routes or major um, systems that you know have issues then that's even good as well um, I usually try to like get kind of off the beaten path in kind of a you know um, a fairly um, you know obscure system to do some mining the longer you mine in systems you'll be able to really kind of build a lot of intel you'll know who the regulars are and then also when you know newer people come to the system that you haven't seen in the past that'll give you even more intel like are these are they gankers or whatever the case may be so um just hanging out in systems sometimes just long enough to see who is you know kind of the normal residents there can help you a ton the next thing we'll talk about is just you know ore efficiency and processing you know do you sell if you're into just selling ore um, straight up you know you always want to like you know at least have it compressed that's uh, you know you can get a better value there um, and then also if you're just doing like manufacturing um, I really wouldn't I would keep everything in compressed form until you get it to where you're actually gonna be building stuff with BPOs then you can refine it and those usually want to be in like you know areas that you can get some bonus for those refining like maybe an engineering complex having a hauler that's able to move that heavier material um, from maybe a station that does really really well with refining has a good refining bonus to somewhere where you're actually manufacturing are all things to kind of keep in mind in most cases you'll probably end up just you know if you're not manufacturing you'll be just selling everything straight to market so in those cases you can use like a porpoise or an orca um, and just uh, be salvaging or compressing that stuff in space or you can use um, citadels or player run structures to compress this stuff as you kind of go and I usually 
fill up um, a, like a Mackinac and then go and compress it and then kind of throw it on the stockpile. That way I don't have this, you know, point in time where I have to, you know, do multiple trips to uh, compress large amounts of ore, which is also possible. You know, you have an orca, you can take an entire orca full of um, uncompressed ore over and compress it. You just don't want to travel too much doing that. I usually try to pick systems that um, have a station that has compression unless I have an orca. If you have an orca, you can pretty much go anywhere, mine anywhere, because you can compress it in that ship if you have the modules and the training. So that feature, that onboard compression has made um, solo mining um, or just mining in random systems so much easier in uh, recent years. The next thing we'll talk about is just, you know, setting goals, setting just realistic uh, short-term and long-term goals. Um, for me, my sh most of the time, my short-term goal is, like, making an X amount of um, ISK per day for mining. Long-term goal might be, like, something like stockpiling enough uh, trit to do um, a certain manufacturing job or whatever. That's going to be really subjective to you know the individual and kind of what their overall goal is for mining if you're like me and you just enjoy mining and eve and you don't really care about the is then you could probably get away with just a very simple goal of just um setting yourself kind of a challenge like can i do 100 mil today um and the next day you know try to top that or whatever the case may be this helps keep things interesting and helps keep you kind of engaged um and it gives you something to kind of strive for and everything the next tip we're going to talk about is um, going to be like leveraging alts and you know using the alts to kind of better your efficiency and and everything. Normally, what I suggest is if you're very new to mining and you just have like a single miner, having you know then adding another uh, another alt for like a porpoise is better in most cases than just adding another Mackinac to your fleet because adding that porpoise you know uh, alt that will boost your existing mining alt will um will you'll have a lot better overall uh performance and efficiency um once you actually have that leadership uh, mining leadership uh alt kind of made then you can add an additional like mackinaws or whatever to that and they can all be they can all have been be benefited by the mining boost and everything so normally that's how those uh, what i try to you know uh recommend people is like have your regular mining alt then get like a porpoise or an orca pilot then start adding additional regular minor, miners on top of that because once you start once you add compression once you add the ability to boost your miners um then you can just scale the entire operation so much easier by just uh, slow training uh new mackinac pilots and those guys will usually start off you know you'll bring them out in you know ventures and then they'll eventually just come out and you know procures and eventually they'll kind of match come up and match your um, original mining alt in that uh, in that Mackinac, and then you'll you know definitely at that point start seeing uh, the benefits for all of that. The next thing we're gonna talk about is invest in skills and upgrades. And as far as skills go, you just want to make sure you're getting all the secondary and tertiary mining skills. So you want to make sure you're maximizing all the yield and everything that's kind of available on those fronts. And let's kind of just go in here and talk about some of these resource processing skills and everything I'm going to go over to my skills here so like mining mining upgrades uh, are really good if you're wanting to do manufacturing or if you want your guys to use crystals then you know level four on a lot of these um, or processing skills is important you know so that you do have the option to run those um, crystals with modulated strip miner twos and things like that Reprocessing, reprocessing efficiency, um, astrogeology, things like that. And then also if you plan on getting into ice mining or things like that, you want ice harvesting, ice processing. And also just um, in terms of like uh, mining drone skills as well, mining drone spec, mining drone operation, just in case you want to add mining drones to your operation as well. As solo mining, I really don't you know use mining drones too much. If I did use them, I'd just use like tech twos just for a little bit of an added bonus but uh, in most cases they add very little to the overall kind of experience but um it is an option that you can uh you can definitely utilize if you want to just kind of really min max your whole process next thing we'll talk about is just plan for safety and escape that's just like you know things like always staying aligned to a celestial if somebody comes on group with you and they immediately try to lock you up you're able to just 
you know take off I've done uh, multiple videos on um, align mining or drag mining um, and also just you know overall strategies for like getting out of getting out of the way but also in most cases if you're watching local and you're watching for spikes and you're watching dscan you're gonna have all the time in the world to get off of grid and get to safety utilize book bookmarks um, in like deep space or um, just you know rear tethers on uh, structures a rear tether is basically like you know if you have a if you have a, like a gate and then a structure and then somebody flies from the gate to the structure they'll be on one side of that structure the rear tether would basically be on the opposite side of that structure so you're warping to the to the opposite side and they would have to essentially you know if they followed you to the structure they'd still make their way all the way around so just adapting your strategy using bookmarks and uh, different celestials and things like that can uh, make or break <laughs> your success in certain uh, sticky situations. I usually don't have a whole lot of issues with other players. Um, a lot of the time when you do um, see gankers come in, um, they're going to pretty much know exactly where they're going to try to go because they probably already pre-scouted with a uh, cloaked ship or whatever. So just making yourself a hard target, you know, instead of going to the same asteroid belt for every single mining session out, uh, say you like you fill up a Mackinac and you go compress it, drop it off, and then go back to that same asteroid belt. Change up the asteroid belt. You know, rotate through five or six asteroid belts, so you're always kind of changing your location, um, and only you know try to like not be you know try not to have very much uh, predictable actions, and it will help you keep safe as well. And also <coughs> for the last uh, for the last tip here for the video is just to like adapt and evolve with ever growing changes in Eve. I mean, watch those patch notes. Whenever you see like any balance changes to ore or industry in general or to mining ships, you know, figure out how that's going to affect your overall operation and just adjust accordingly. We don't see a whole lot of changes in terms of industry, especially mining, but you never know. Always stay vigilant. Always read those patch notes and always. Um, you know, make sure you know what's going on so that you don't, um, you know, get caught off guard or, you know, wonder why your yield is, is horrible or whatever the case may be. And also it's like, you know, for instance, when the mining changes came out for um, onboard a compression, right, that changed a lot of people's operations and how they kind of do things and, um, and where they actually mine as well. So just staying informed with all the changes that are coming or that have been added is um, also just a really big step on being successful as a solo miner. But I want to thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to kind of cover um, a little bit in terms of, um, you know, solo mining and, you know, just kind of things to, like, you know, keep in mind and all that. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better idea or you at least, you know, um, have some actionable um, actionable things that you can do and go out and improve what you're already doing or if you're looking at getting into mining hopefully this has motivated you to get out there and you know get on those asteroid belts and make uh, some precious precious isk but thank you for watching hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out